Hello, tonight we are talking about how in functional neurologic disorders, an approach that is really helpful to take is to make sense of it together. You, the clinician, the person with FND, um, making sense of what's happening in their brain and body together. So that's our topic tonight. I am pretty stoked about this topic because we just had a free workshop last night and it was awesome. I, I'm not going to lie. I Not awesome because of me, but awesome because of the people that came. By the way, if you came, um, shout that out here in the comments. But we had so many wonderful clinicians and people with FND who came to the workshop and shared so freely um, and just like really gave us a lot of gifts, to be honest, of their uh, what was happening for them. And um, so I wanted to share a piece of that and dive in actually a little deeper into an example of how, like a way that we might as clinicians do this. And this is a way, by the way, that you would maybe if you have FND, actually kind of organize some of your symptoms and um suggestions to bring to a physician's office too. So, um, yay. Oh my gosh. Some, yes, you did come. So someone is saying, this is Jay Blue Heron, um, that they did come and got an annual membership. So one thing that we did in our, in our workshop is we decided to put our FND membership, which is a membership for people with FND from all over the world. We put it on sale for 25% off and had uh, lots of people join us uh, because it's a really good deal. So um, I'm so glad that um, that means I get to um, hang out in the membership with you. So I want to share um, though, a way that we can make sense together of symptoms. And this is through our pie chart. So if you haven't seen our pie chart before, I'm going to share a picture of it. Uh, let's see. I hope I get the right one. Here we go. Um, so this is something that we developed um, for um, actually now any neurologic disorder, but we developed this for FND. And this is, we started with this um, because at the time there were, there was not a lot of research. We had some consensus recommendations, but there was a lot of neuroscience research happening. And I love reading neuroscience literature and started seeing these patterns, as did the researcher. There were components of FND related to motor control, to sensory, to psychosocial components, to lifestyle, to autonomic, and to physical limitations. These are the biggest areas that as a rehab professional, as a physical therapist or occupational therapist or speech therapist, these are what you might see. Um, and so I share this pie chart. This is our subjective pie chart. The subjective meaning just what a person is uh, sharing with us. What's their story? This is the first part where we can start to make sense together just by listening to the story. And um, this example was really fresh on my mind because just before the workshop uh, went live yesterday, I actually got to meet with one of the people with FND who is in our membership, uh, which by the way, uh, Lenny asked, I didn't get the link in time. Is this sta sale still going on? Yes. So our membership sale is going on through tomorrow. Um, if you need a link to the sale, let me know, send me a direct message. I'll send that to you. Um, but I met with one of our members. So, um, People in the membership are folks from all over the world. They may have worked with us in person, then they continued on, or they never worked with us in person like this person. He lives in Oklahoma. And um, he's in an annual membership, meaning he uh, signed up for a whole year, which means we get to meet with him every six months to check in. Uh, check in on his pie chart, right? So we co-create a pie chart. His goals, what he wants to get out of the membership, what he is getting out of the membership, his feedback. We provide resources uh, for his own clinical team, right? So I had just had 
um, my wellness uh, evaluation with this person. And a big part of it was listening to one, he's made really great progress in the membership with learning and understanding what's happening in his brain and body. Um, but he's still sharing, he's still having some sensitivity to light and to sound, um, getting off balance, maybe having a fall. Um, all of these things as I'm listening are very sensory related. So I'm, I'm listening, I'm hearing these stories and um, symptoms and environment where he's having the symptoms and and then I'm able to ask him so I'm hearing these things and you now you know he's been in the membership for six months so he really gets the pie chart like we we have classes on each piece of the pie we have months actually on each piece of the pie and he's like I, I said what I'm hearing are a lot of sensory symptoms and do you do you agree that that is a big part of the pie? And he's like, yes, I find my sensory system just gets overwhelmed, right? And I was like, really sounds like it. Now, he also shared he had had some childhood trauma, actually a lot of stuff growing up. And he's like, I've, I've had a lot of adverse childhood events. I've had trauma. I've had depression. I've had anxiety. And he said, I do think that's part of the pie, but not the only part of the pie. And I was like, I agree. There's some other things happening there. He um, has hypermobility. He has a hypermobility disorder. So that brings along some physical limitations, right? So he'll get dislocations. That is not FND, but that is certainly contributing to what's happening in his brain and body. Also, that hypermobility and some of those physical limitations. So again, I'm just listening at this point. He's sharing the hypermobility, the um, the physical pain, the dislocations. Those are physical impairments. I'm pointing up here. That's like the top piece of the pie. And also, a hypermobility spectrum disorder may also contribute to sensory changes because you might not be getting great feedback from your body proprioceptive wise so again i'm listening and i'm hearing from him the physical limitations the pain the dislocations and i'm going ah we do have a physical limitation piece of the pie um and he said yeah yeah i think i do have a physical limitation piece of the pie and i was like well that that's really interesting you hadn't really identified that as much before and he said but i i he said i don't think it's a huge piece of the pie i was like okay like we'll make that piece of the pie smaller and actually when we're doing some of these wellness evaluations um we have a pie chart that we keep changing the pieces of the pie like how how big is the physical limitation piece of the pie well he thought it was a little smaller um and then went on to share about all of the other pieces and where he thought they fit in. And I could take some of the information, um, share that back to him, share my interpretation, ask him what he thought. And that whole process together really is a shared collaborative process. And this is what Lauren Keats talked about in our workshop last night of sharing a collaborative process to make meaning together. It's not that he filled out a questionnaire or told me things and I said, ta-da, here's your pie chart. Let's make it together, right? And so Lauren, I, I love the pie chart for that in that it gives us a framework to um, kind of put those pieces to, together. I think together is the key word, right? So Lauren, as I was going to say, um, she shared this as well last night. This is in our FND workbook that we uh, use in our FND membership, but also what we use in our um, in our um, uh, in in our treatment. Right. So we have a workbook. We actually ask people to create a pie chart. Now they may have never seen the reactive pie with sensory and autonomic and all of those things. So before a person sees that, we might just ask them, 
like where do you think your symptoms are coming from? You know, are they coming from your your nervous system, your tissues, meaning like your joints and muscles and ligaments and, and things like that, your life or the environment? And a person might create their pie. And what I love is people get really creative. So I just want to share an example. This was a young girl that I worked with and she drew and colored her pie. And you can kind of see the brain, the nervous system part looking like the brain and um, the tissues looking like the muscles. Um, and then there's the environment and uh, and life, right? So she had fairly equal pieces of the pie. And what is so lovely about this is she can bring this in and I can then ask, like, tell me more. Tell me more what's happening in your body. What do you, what do you find in your muscles? And she can say, you know what, this... That I have a muscle that is turning my foot in inward and it's really tight and painful, right? And so that leads me as a physical therapist to like, I, I know where to go. I know how to assess that, right? And we can look at that together and look specifically, what what's the length of that muscle? What has the functioning of that muscle, right? So her pie and me asking about her interpretation and how she understands it leads me to bring in, okay, well, I know something about that. Let's figure it out together, right? So she's guiding this. And Lauren used this great analogy last night. Like um, she's driving the ship. Lauren had this little animated sailboat. She's driving the ship. I'm the guide that is maybe providing a map, but but she's she's telling us where she wants to go, right? So in this case, for this young girl, she wanted to walk again. And so she's giving me the pieces so we can start putting together a map. Now, my map might look more like uh, this. So just another version of the pie here. Whoops, let me choose a different one. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me grab another pie. So my map often looks like this. Okay, I thought I had another one here. Um, but instead of all, all uh, pieces of pie, we'll co-create from her pie chart and and start to go, okay, it sounds like, like you saw in her pie chart, environment and life are really big. What pieces of that? Can we assess it? Can we get down to what that might be and figure it out together and start putting together a plan in place to, to get you back to life? Let's figure out those muscle pieces and joints. Like I put those in physical limitations. Let's figure those out together. And then she had identified her nervous system. Well, that could be autonomic. And you know what? It sure was for her. She had a racing heart rate. Um, and um, she wasn't diagnosed with another autonomic disorder, but it was part of what was making walking really hard for her. Um, we often screen, by the way, for the presence of other autonomic disorders. Somebody asked a really great question last night. Is dysautonomia F and D? It is not. POTS is not F and D. Dysautonomia, not F and D, but they might coexist, right? And when we're looking at the whole person together, we want to consider any and all diagnoses and we want to treat it together, right? So if a person does have F and D and migraine or F and D and POTS, we want to treat both of those things. Turns out, working with the autonomic nervous system might be a piece of that, right? But we're gonna figure that out together. Is that even important to the person, right? I might have, as a physical therapist, I might have an assessment and find something that I think is important, but if it's not important to the person, what, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're like, who's driving the ship? Like we're fighting over the controls of the ship, right? And that's not helpful for anybody. So it really is about the co-creation and collaboration 
um, in the use of the pie chart. So again, I just wanted to show you this as a resource, as a way you uh, might do this. And um, again, we might give somebody kind of a general thing. What do you what do you think is contributing to your symptoms and do it in a very general way? Or like I was sharing with you, I did with um, this person in our wellness um, membership, our FND online membership, we could actually take out the whole pie chart because in our FND membership, we are diving in to a whole month of sensory assessment and treatment, um, a whole month of autonomic sensory, uh, autonomic assessment and treatment. We have a whole month of lifestyle assessment and treatment. And actually, this is the typical order. We spend a week on the science, so we go through the evidence and the research. We spend a week on assessment. How can you self-assess? What assessments might you bring to your uh, clinical team? Um, and then we typically spend two weeks on treatment. What treatment can you use to self-manage your symptoms and regain control? What treatment might you bring to a treatment team? So one of the things I love about our FND membership, it really is empowering the person with an FND with a whole lot of knowledge about themselves to be able to advocate. Um, in the healthcare field. And what I loved about, um, so going back to um, this, this story that I shared, this person in Oklahoma, we did his um, six month uh, wellness evaluation, is he shared that he knew what to bring to his physical therapist. He has functional seizures. And he now, because we had a whole month on functional seizures in our FND membership, he has a seizure plan that he created himself. And he could bring that to his healthcare team and say, okay, I will probably have a seizure. Here is my plan. Here is what we should do together. And I just love that. I just love that. And um, he has the tools and now he's educating his team. He's bringing the pie chart. So that was the last piece that I was going to say when it comes to the pie chart. Um, and it comes to making sense of it together. What I have heard from several members in our FND membership is that they created their pie chart. So they put their symptoms um, and maybe some of even their findings from different evaluations organized it into the pie chart and then brought it to their phys neurology appointment or their physical therapist appointment and said, this is how I understand what is happening for me. These are the areas I need to test, uh, assess, and to treat. Um, that is powerful, right? So being able to know and understand what is happening in your brain and body and then be able to take it to the person that might help facilitate a treatment plan, I, I think it's I, I think it's worth its weight in gold, right? I think that is so powerful for people. And that is really truly one of the the reasons that we started this membership one we're out in california not everybody can get out here we were getting asked by people all the time can you see me over here can you see me here um and we're 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 small private practice in california it's not accessible for everybody and um we knew that we could help people one-on-one -on -one. and we also had a lot of folks in our classes when we put it into this membership we saw things really change for people and one of the biggest pieces was that um, people were learning about themselves and gaining tools to be able to advocate and to be empowered to um, take control of their symptoms and to get better um, and, and people are some people, it's a little tiny step. They started walking outdoors. Uh, one person said her symptoms weren't a lot better yet, but she was having fun. And I just like, I, when I saw that comment in our, in our membership, I just um, smiled so big because I, I don't think there's much, not much better than having fun. Um, 
And some people, I, I have one person who I'll have to share and have her come on in an interview. She doesn't have any symptoms anymore. And she's a teacher and got back to work. She had her first vacation with her kids um, and is just doing fabulous. Um, so quite a range of what we see uh, can happen for people when they have the tools um, and the knowledge um, so that they can get the, the treatment that they need and advocate for what they need. And they also have each other. And I think that's one of the biggest things that uh, I love is that um, people in the membership connect to each other and they support each other other. I'm in the membership. Yes. Lauren, our neuropsychologist is in the membership. Kimberly from our psychology team is in the membership. Uh, we've got PT and OT in the membership every day, but it's people supporting people that is really powerful. Yeah. Um, Jay Blue Heron says a powerful way that helps us speak to speak to the doctors and therapists. Yeah, it really is powerful to have the language, the words, the knowledge to know what to ask for is so very helpful. So one of the things that I loved in our workshop last night was that um, about half of the people there were clinicians and half of the people there were people with FND. And all of us there were learning from each other. And it was a really, really lovely way. In fact, I feel like I'll do all workshops like that because there's so much that we can learn from each other. We learned that a lot of clinicians want to learn and know more and they want to listen to a person's perspective. They really do. And we also learned that people with F&D uh, were... We're tired of getting the runaround. We're, um, had been so disrespected in medical appointments that, that it was hard to build trust again with healthcare professionals. And that was such a strong message to hear, um, and listen to and know and understand that that building tr trust is going to be really important. Yeah, as Paige says, very disrespected. We last night in our workshop, we heard that over and over again. Yeah, Lini says traumatized. Yes, we shared um, one of the recent papers on stigma and F and D, and these are some of the themes that come up over and over again is um, how traumatizing medical appointments have been for people. To be told that they were faking it, um, to be told that, um, uh, in fact, I think one person shared that they had to admit they were faking it to be able to get treatment. And uh, that was actually something I had never heard. Um, or yes, as Lini is saying, that it's just anxiety. I just want you to look at the pie chart here and see that, yes, somebody can have anxiety. But there are so many other things that might be involved in developing a functional neurologic disorder. Um uh, someone else said isolating. Yes, so isolating because you feel um, different. Um, you're treated differently. Uh, I, I, I did a, a whole session and a whole lecture to clinicians um, uh, to have us stop being weird with FND because this is what happens is people are weird. Clinicians are weird and they are... Um, they are othering people with F and D, and that's not okay. Um, uh, Jay Blue Heron said, "I loved seeing the clinicians there. Oh, I found one in my city. Oh, yay! Yeah, there were clinicians from all over. I found one in my city that if I need to go, someone I'll choose someone who is wanting to learn more. I just want to like give the biggest heart to that. I feel like my heart is exploding just knowing that. Yeah, you know what? We don't all know what we're doing, right? We don't all know and understand F and D. I talked about this in the workshop last night, like." 
when I learned about it, I was like, what? what? Functional what? I had never heard of it. And then I learned and I wanted to learn more. And that was really exciting to see a lot of clinicians wanting to learn more. Um, yeah. And Paige says medical trauma and invalidation would take up the psychosocial parts of the pie alone. Right. And that's not causing the FND. That's actually as a result of the FND, right? And I think what is so important is to recognize sometimes people develop anxiety because of these symptoms. They may have had anxiety before, but certainly having involuntary movements or involuntary seizures that you can't control would be anxiety producing for anyone. Um, and then enduring the medical trauma and invalidation that might occur, Yes, that is also going to create anxiety. And um, this is an important part. That might not, that didn't cause the symptoms, but it's as a result of it. And as, as healthcare professionals, we need to know and understand that. And we need to take the steps to build that trust back. I really understand when people don't trust me as a healthcare professional, when they have um, been treated as they may have been. And such a big part of why we advocate um, here at Reactive, why we do a lot of these free trainings, why we do really accessible courses and like our FND membership for a very low cost is because um, this is a like such rapidly changing field. So much new understanding um, is coming like literally every day. And many of us didn't learn this in school. And there's this huge amount of stigma and misunderstanding. Um, and we we just have to keep repeating ourselves until until the world starts to change, which I very much believe it will. Um, and I'll just keep myself yelling over here un until it does. And I'm going to do that alongside you all sharing your lived experience. So I also just really want to thank you um, for, for showing up, sharing the experience that you've had, and for really helping us as clinicians understand it and make sense of it. Um, so that we can join the journey with you, right? Not to take the wheel, um, but to be a guide and help figure out all of these pieces of the pie with you um, so that you can have those next steps, right? And so I'll just end with a story from here. I'll stop sharing my pie chart here. I got so used to seeing it, I forgot it was there. Um, I'll end with a story. So I was telling you all, if you just joined in, um, I got started on this topic um, because I was doing um, a wellness evaluation, a six month wellness evaluation with somebody in our FND membership. And um, our FND membership, by the way, is an online membership for people with uh, functional neurologic disorders. And he's in Oklahoma. And uh, we were co-creating this pie chart. He was talking about his goals. Um, he was talking a lot about some of this invalidation and medical trauma that, that he had experienced. And, um, and also some of the steps forward and progress that he had made. And um, he was kind of ready for that next, that next step. And so, you know, towards the end of our hour, um, I really just summarized what we had talked about with that pie chart. And I had said, you know, it really sounds like the symptoms that you're experiencing might have a very large sensory component. And again, this was based on the, the story and symptoms that he was telling me. And this is an area that you haven't been able to address yet. And this will be a very important area for you, your physical therapist. Um, I, I talked to him about occupational therapy and how helpful occupational therapy has been for my clients um, and sensory processing and sensory integration. And I kind of summarized all of that so that he could then go and advocate with his physical therapist 
advocate with to get occupational therapy and also go back to his neurologist and say, I'm having these symptoms. They're not entirely psychological. There are other things happening here and I can get the therapy to help me. And um, that is priceless, I think, to have the knowledge and understanding to to then go back to all of those people in the healthcare team and advocate for what for what you need to get better. Um, so that collaborative, making sense of it together process, uh, which I love in it's very much a part of our wellness program, um, and. Um, and I feel really thankful, honestly, very, very thankful to be a part of it. So if you missed our live workshop that we did last night, the recording is available. You can send me a link. You can comment below um, or send me a link. You can send me a message. I'll send you a link. You can catch the recording. Somebody else had asked and, and said they had missed it. Um, but what we announced in our um, live workshop was that we would share our membership for people with F&D um, for 25% off. It's over $250 off for the, um, the um, annual membership. Sorry, I lost my words there for a moment, but you could also get a month-to-month -month membership um, for a really great deal. And um, uh, boy, I really lost my words there. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I was going to say, oh yeah, Hetty, uh, can you please send me a link to the workshop? If you will send me a direct message, that will help me remember to send it to you. Sometimes I get in Instagram and it's hard for me to find people when I saw them live. So send me a direct message. I will send you a link to the workshop. I'll send you a link to the sale because it's just through tomorrow. Um, but I will tell you, I'll let you in on a little secret. We always do a Cyber Monday sale after Thanksgiving too. So um, that's also coming and that is for all of our wellness services. So that's for our memberships. It's not more than this sale, but that's for our memberships. That's for per personal training. You could work with our trainers. That's for yoga therapy. All of those things are going to be on sale the Monday after um, Thanksgiving. So I want to give you a heads up uh, because you're still here live with me. Um, but otherwise, I will send you the link to um, the F&D membership sale that we announced last night, but it ends tomorrow. I also, if you are a clinician, um, Lauren Keats, our neuropsychologist, um, is, and our rehab psychologist, Dr. Mike, the psych, um, are open now for doing consultations with you. And we also put those on sale for two days. So I can also share that if you are a clinician, a psychologist that's wanting to do consultation, this is a really great opportunity. I love, love, love working with these two. If you're a person with FND um, that that has a clinician that they're working with, this would be a great thing to share with them too. So um, just send me a direct message. I'll send you uh, the links. And as usual, we send out our newsletter every, every week with these resources and videos. If you're not on our newsletter, you can go sign up at reactiveeducation.com if you are a clinician or reactivept.com if you are a patient. Either way, I'll send out a newsletter and all of these resources for you. Um, one last thing I wanted to share because the holidays are coming up. In our membership, we're doing a very special session with our psychology team next week, right before the holidays, all about the holidays and how you might manage the holidays as a person with functional neurologic disorders with lots and lots of uh, tips and strategies for you. I'm going to this one. I gotta tell you, the holidays are really hard for me. Um, and especially since I lost my mom. And I know that's the case for many, many people. Holidays are hard. There's more people, there's more activities. Uh, if you're sensitive, sensory-wise, there's a lot of sensory information coming at you. Um, 
And um, we're doing a psychology led workshop all about that. And it's next week in our FND membership. So um, anyway, oh, Paige, that is really, really nice. And thank you. I know a lot of people find the holidays hard because of grief. And um, I never really understood that. I'm going to be really honest until I lost my mom. So thank you so much for, for saying that, Paige. But um, we all could use a little extra support around the holidays. And I'm so thankful for our psychology team leading this session um, for, for people all over the world who might also struggle through the holidays. So um, again, thank you for showing up. I think it really says a lot about you as a person um, for caring about this topic for continuing to um, strive and grow to get better. Um, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks so much. And I will see you again really soon. Good night.